this week on Rams 360. Even though like it was the toughest part of my life, yeah. it was also like the best moment of my life because I executed. Cancer is all about just fighting and trying to get better. All the support and everything, anything you could do or others can do, I mean, that helps a lot. Come on, dog! Stop playing with him! Let's go, boy! All this and more on Rams 360. What's up, you guys? It's Jay Mendoza. Welcome back to Andy Barrio, presented by Rocket Mortgage. Today, I'm super excited to present one of my good friends, a social media success, has accumulated millions and millions and millions and millions of views. He's a family man, and I think he's a soon-to-be actor. My man, legend forever. You forgot to say, and he's cute. Oh, and he's cute. cute. You know what I'm saying? Like What's up? But I'm legend. cute, though. We are here in the 818, the heart of the valley, Van Nuys, California, and to be exact, where are we? Bro, we are, where are we? in where are we? front of Van Nuys High School, man. This is where I came. One thing about this, bro, is that, about this entire journey for me, uh -huh. is that I have not forgotten where I come from, man. And it's moments like this that reminds me of how far we have come. The feeling that I'm getting right now, man, it's just, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so humble to be here. And it puts everything in perspective even more for me. And man, I know I'm, there's a lot of history within the San Fernando Valley. A lot of people came out of San Fernando Valley. But is there any traditions I should know about being in the San Fernando Valley, the 818? Hey, bro, let me tell you something, all right? It don't matter what time of year it is, okay? Uh -huh. When your grandma makes sopa, you're gonna eat that. Even if it's summertime hey. and you're rocking a sweater at a hey, 108 degrees though. weather. San Fernando Valley gets hot. So we're both Latinos. We're both parents now. Yes, sir. Is there any traditions you want to pass on to your kids or anything you feel like, yo, I got to teach these kids? You know what it is, man, is that um, I have created these new traditions for my family. Mm -hmm. And that's, man, that's always being thankful and grateful for the things that we do got and that we don't got. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what I'm trying to apply to my kids. So I know you get this question all the time because I'm curious, the people are curious. Who was the first person you ever performed? Because I, I know you knew you had some type of funniness in you. I, I used to get in trouble in the school a lot for just being a class clown and, you know, blurring stuff out, man. It was just like my personality. So yeah, it, yeah. it was who I am. But that's the beauty of it, man. The beauty of it is be yourself, be yeah. you no matter what. And I ain't never changed for nobody yeah, yeah. and for anything or for any job. You know, yeah, this yeah. is who I am. So because you didn't change for nobody, so you said, yo, I'm gonna start filming this. Is that just kind of how it happened or? You know what, man, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was, you know, already old enough to know like, yo, what, what are we doing? Yeah, you yeah. know, like, what are we doing in my life right now that's going to, help my kids and make them understand that anything that they want to become, they could become. Yeah. And so I started with me, yeah, yeah. you know, and uh, I know Vine was around and YouTube was around at that time. And what I started doing was I just started creating my skits. Yeah, I yeah. just grabbed my phone, yeah, legit, yeah. just grab my phone. I learned how to edit on my own. I learned, I mean, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. You just knew you were gonna post something. <laughs> I knew I was gonna post something. Yeah, yeah. And at that time, I was shooting four or five videos a day. So I've been watching your videos a lot for a very long time. And uh, how does it feel to actually have your family involved? You got your kids, you got Desiree, you know what I'm saying? Like That's, that's the best part about doing what I'm doing is to have them involved and to have them be a part of of my journey. Yeah, yeah. You know, I when I started doing this, it was just all me. Yeah. Then, you know, I met my girlfriend and it was like, yo, let me bug you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it started from like really showing my personality but on camera. Yeah. And then when my daughter was born, yeah. I wanted to showcase uh, a Latino yeah, yeah. who's there for his family yeah. and who's there for his kids. I want you to take me to the next spot. That's very important to you. All right, man, this one, you might see me cry. Just I'll a little bit, just, little, just a little bit. I'll cry with you, come you on. You got a tissue? All right, so I want you to tell us where we're at because I know where we're at and I know it's a special place in your heart. This is the church on the way in Van Nuys, California. Uh, I was a security guard right here. It's crazy how I landed this, this job, man. But, you know, at that time, 
I would see everybody get security jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were making a lot of money. Yeah. But it was it wasn't like that for me. Yeah. You know, I was making like 1073 yeah. an hour here. And I was getting paid bi-weekly. And I, it wasn't cutting it, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I had a two-year-old that needed my support. So that to me was like, yo, I'm failing as a father, you yeah. know? And Above anything else, I was failing, I felt at that time, because my goal has always been like become an actor. Not many people know this, but you at one time you had to actually sleep out of your car. Yeah. So how did I mean I know that was a tough transition of yeah. sleeping in your car and going to work and having a kid. Yeah, I mean because of having a kid and not having like the perfect job, not making a lot of money. Um, circumstances were yeah. were really bad, yeah. and uh, you know, just to stay away from the house and stay away from certain things, yeah. I started, you know, sleeping in my car. It became my it became my home for yeah. a very long time. So with all the downs, here comes the ups. Yeah. So. And now I could say, I'm looking at somebody who shot with one of my idols, Will Smith. <laughs> eh? Will Smith. <laughs> Crazy. From working at a church to making a video with Will Smith, I mean, bro, from, like, a, from a kid that came from the city, bro, like you had very few options. Yeah. You know, I will I will walk through the, these halls right here, man, um, wondering, bro, how I was going to make it. Yeah. I went up in that room one day, and there's there's a whiteboard. I'm not sure if it's still up there, but there's a whiteboard. I grabbed a marker and I was writing down what my handle, my user name was going to be for Instagram. Legend Forever LG and the FRVR was the very first one and I had like, and boom, I chose it right here, man. This is where all went down. <laughs> Even though like it was the toughest part of my life, yeah. it was also like the best moment oh, of my man. life because I executed, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't just, just dream about it. I started becoming about yeah. it. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't happy where I was at in my life, you yeah, know, yeah. but you know, it was, it was all building up yeah, to yeah. become legend forever are. today, you know what I'm saying? So, and here we are. It's crazy. The church on the way, because he was only on the way up, man. Damn, We're I here. like that, man. You're, You're a poet, man. I'm kind of I a like poet. that. Legend forever. Write that down. Hey, yeah. man, in my hood, Emmy Badio, 818 Van Nuys, fully representing. You yeah. already know, thanks a lot, man. I Thank appreciate you, you and appreciate the you. Los Angeles Rams. I love y'all. Peace. Coming up next on Rams 360. I feel like it's important to bring wellness just to give people that strength and that, that courage to just to keep fighting. I was in college when, um, when they both were diagnosed with it. Um, got calls, both was fighting. One of them made it, one didn't. Um, it just it, it hurts it hurts to hear it, but I, um, then again, just gotta keep them in your prayers and just talk to them every day, and make sure they're strong, and pretty much just be there for them. Uh, my cousin, she was always there um, when I needed her, when my mom, brothers, anybody in the family needed her. Um, she was my cousin, but I call her my auntie. Tyra was a very well-known, educated black. She was a loving, giving, would take her shirt off and give to anybody. Tara was my oldest daughter. If you wanted anyone in your side, it would have been Tara because the one thing about her, she's not gonna let you fail. She didn't believe in it can't be done or you couldn't do it. That was like my mom's best friend. She was like, her and my mom was real tight out of all the cousins. Me and my brother were both in school, so she didn't wanna bring us down or nothing. But when it finally came to the end and her passing away, she had no choice but to tell us. We were unfortunate to find out two months before she passed that she had stage four pancreatic cancer. She turned 49 on the 20th of September and she expired on the 28th of September. So many people depended on Tyra. And for the short amount of time, we didn't expect Tyra to be gone that soon. 
Mine's was a total shock. The doctors totally missed the fact that the x-ray had said that there was an area in my lungs that looked at aggressive. At the time, it was the size of a pea. By the time they actually realized that something was going on, it was the size of a plum. Within two weeks from the time that they finally picked it up, I had done had surgery, was in the hospital for a week, and home. And it just became a like a testimony to how good I was because I, I, they could have missed it and I could have been dead and gone, but I'm still here running. Even though I work at Cedars, uh, being a patient, a cancer patient uh, and survivor, uh, part of that was the rebuilding process. Rebuilding for each cancer survivor is a little different, you know, because what I needed, the other person may not need the same type of, of rebuilding programs, but we offer so many different types that I'm sure a cancer survivor can find the one that's right for them. And know that we here at the Wellness Resilience and Survivorship Department are here to help you when you need it. Uh, we're here to help you rebuild after your cancer treatment. And we want you to know that there is a community of support available to you uh, and that you're not alone. So take it one day at a time and know that we are here when you need us. Well, actually it was hard because again, she's the go-to auntie for everything, for everybody in the family. When you need prayer, you went to her. When you needed advice, you went to her. And for her to be going through and dealing with what she was dealing with, it was kind of hard. I mean, it wasn't as hard as it was with me, with Tara, but, you know, because me and Tara was close. We was real close. And, and I mean, to see them go through what they went through was very hard, not just on me, on our family. We are very, very close-knit family. It's about 150 of us or more now, but because we love one another, we are our support. We're just having a sister, brother, a daughter and son, children, a cousins, you know, that, that, that they were there. They was that nucleus that she needed. My family, by us being big, we helped each other and we do well on each other. So uh, I feel like it's important to bring wellness is um, just to give people that strength and that, that courage to, to just to keep fighting and not to just um, give up. And I mean, cancer is all about just fighting and try to get better. All the support and everything, anything you could do or others can do, I mean, that helps a lot because it helps the person just not be down. The advice that I give uh, someone that's just going through cancer or whatever, battling anything, just pretty much just just fight, keep fighting and, and, and never give up. What's up with you, bro? It's the rookie Robert Rochelle with the first of his career. I told you you're gonna make a play. You are watching Rams 360. and sunny here at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey for week six. It's time to turn up, man. I feel a big day coming, man. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, Johnny. Yep, you already know. Let's go, man. Yes, sir! That's a catch! Rams send the blitz. Daniel Jones hit from behind. Ball comes out. It's a strip sack. And the Rams recover! Let's go! Let's go! Just outside the 10 yard line, Leonard Floyd comes away with the football. Yeah! 
Let's go, slow! Hey, almost. That's you, boy. That's you. Come on, dog! Stop playing with him! Let's go, boy! We gotta get another throw. Yep. Let's go get one. Rams bring five. He pumps, he throws, it's intercepted! Middle of the field, Taylor Rapp running back Let's to the go. 20 and the 15. Let's go, boy! That's what we do, boy! Come on! Here comes the play. Three man rush for the Rams. He throws right side and it is intercepted! Picked on, off again at the 36 of LA. It's the rookie Robert Rochelle with the first of his career. I thought you were gonna make a play. First down snap. Play fix. Stand on platform. Throws left side. Intercepted again! It's Taylor Rapp at the left sideline for the second time today. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh, oh my God! What's up with you, bro? What's up with you? What's up with you, bro? You wildin'. Almost. You can't hit. <laughs> Kenny can't dance. I'm gonna hit the one where y'all can't dance, boy. What is it? The Dougie. The Dougie's right. Look at your knees. Look at that. You press in the middle, huh? You had a Dougie. I'm gonna hit the nah. Y'all oh. <laughs> wait for after the game for that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. LA 38, <laughs> New York 11. Rams improved to five and one. As they head home to face the Lions, they spill the Giants to one and five. Uh, what do you have to say about tonight? I'm just happy I got a chicken club from, from back home. Mar Mario's, you know, uh -huh. it's the best sandwich on earth. Yeah. Trust me. Coming up next on Rams 360. Now watch this. Ooh, my goodness. One, two, three, four blue jerseys surrounding one guy. That is the Mona Lisa of football right there. All 22 powered by Microsoft Surface. We're going to look back at week six. Taylor Rapp's big day versus the New York Giants. Now dig this. It's 14 to three right here. So the Giants are abandoning their, their game plan. They have to throw to get back in the football game. So here's Taylor Rapp here. It has the box safety. I think this is where he's best. This is his home right here. The Giants are in a three by one set. Three by one with a back here. Clearly in for protection. Look where his alignment is. He's not running the football for there. This is all pass. Everybody knows it. Now watch this. This is great. Smart play by the Giants, clearly playing ball control here, trying to pick up the first down, stay on the field. So what they give Taylor Rapp here, he is the read for Daniel Jones. He is reading him. There are two receivers. One's going to run a deep comeback. He's going to run shallow for the first down. So if Taylor Rapp drifts back into the cradle, Daniel Jones throws here. If he stays on the line, he throws behind him. But watch Taylor Rapp on this play. This is where his, where he's brilliant. Now watch him fool Daniel Jones. Who do I have? What area am I covering? No, I'm going to sink a little bit. Now watch this. Ooh, my goodness. One, two, three, four blue jerseys surrounding one guy. That is the Mona Lisa of football right there. There's nowhere to go with the football. Three things can happen, and they're all good for the Rams. Foul. Nice pick. Hips don't lie, but safeties do. All right, let's go to the second play. The Giants, like I said, they have clearly abandoned the game plan. They are throwing on almost every down to get back in this football game. Taylor Rapp this time right here in the slot. Daniel Jones again is reading Taylor Rapp here. Whatever he does, I'll do the opposite. But why is this so dangerous? Because Taylor Rapp gets to his area when he's supposed to and then cheats back to make a play on the football. This is gorgeous. Watch this here. I love this. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Sink, sink, sink. Bam! That's stealing. I love this right there. Oh, my gosh. Look at this catch. Right to his hands. Stick to him like Velcro. It is rap music time, man. What a play. What a game. Two-pick day for Taylor Rapp. Great day for the defense. Lots of pressure. I bet if you ask Daniel Jones what he saw on game day, he'll say all I saw was blue and yellow. Wow, what a heck of a play. All right, that'll do it for the All-22 for Week 6. Can't wait for Week 7. All 22, powered by Microsoft Surface. 
to enjoy getting the chance to see some of those guys that I've you know spent a lot of time and played a lot of you know meaningful football with. But at the same time, once the ball snaps, you know I'm gonna do everything I can to play as good as I can and help our team win. Stay tuned for more Rams 360. He's so real, he's so genuine, he's so authentic. You know, he's got a lot of great experiences, a lot of great relationships that he's had there. You know, I don't want to speak for him, but I would imagine, hey, he's going to lock in. He's got the same sort of focus and concentration that I've seen from the previous six weeks. And then I think, uh, you know, he's going to expect to put himself in a position to go out and play well, and, and that's what we expect him to do. I watched the tape. I'll come out here to practice, try to execute at a high level, try to get as ready as I can mentally and physically for a game on Sunday. Am I going to know some of the faces on the other side of the ball better than some people? Yeah. There's a bunch of turnover as well. You know, there's a bunch of people out there that I don't know that are on the Lions now. So I'm going to enjoy getting the chance to see some of those guys that I've, you know, spent a lot of time and played a lot of, you know, meaningful football with. But at the same time, once the ball snaps, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to play as good as I can and help our team win. You know, I know I'm surrounded by great players and, and coaches that are, that are really smart and, you know, have a clear vision and we go from there. A lot of those guys were young players and are continuing to really develop and get better. I watched the tape and really that's probably the, the biggest thing I see is, man, this guy was here and now he's playing at this level. He's playing really well. You know, I think of Amani on the outside, like practice against him all the time and you could see that potential in there. And then now you see him on Sundays doing it for real and playing great. You know, it's, it's fun to see that. Same with Tracy, same with Will Harris, some of those guys that, you know, I've, I've practiced against a lot and uh, to watch them elevate their game and, and continue to progress and get better and better is, is fun for me to see, you know, it'll be a challenge for us this week. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next week for more Rams 360.